Today I want to talk about setting my black and white points in an image. Often when I'm teaching a new student, I get the question, where do I even begin to edit this photograph? That's a difficult question to ask because every image varies and there's different problems within different images depending on what it is. So answering that question can be kind of difficult, but I have found that setting my black and white point sometimes is a great place to start. And it's a very easy process. I've broken it down into a two-step process. and I'm going to show you how to do it today with a couple of different images just so you could see the difference between the two. So the first step in setting our black and white points is to go down here to what I refer to as the yin and yang sign. This is where I'm going to find all of my adjustment layers. The yin and yang sign is obviously not its technical term, but it kind of looks like a yin and yang sign to me, so that's what I call it. And that's where you'll find all of your adjustment layers. The first one that we want to use is called the threshold adjustment layer. So I'm just going to click on that. When I do, it's going to bring up this histogram looking thing here. And what this is doing is measuring my black and white points. It has removed the midtones. There are no grays here. It's purely blacks and whites. So the first step is for me to take this little slider that I have here and move it to one direction or the other. Now it doesn't matter whether I go left or right. Just pick a side and go with it. I'm just going to move it over to the left hand side for now. And when I do, my image here is primarily going to turn white. You'll notice that there's still a little bit of black speckles happening here. And this is probably just because I didn't have the ideal exposure. In fact, these black points here probably have no detail recorded. So they remain. That's not the end of the world. I'm just going to move past it for now. What I'm going to do is go back to this slider point and I'm going to begin to move it to the right just a little bit, slightly. And as I do, I'll begin to see some more black points happening here in my image. So what I need to do now is I need to grab a tool. I'm going to come over here to my tools panel on the left. And you'll notice here that under the eyedropper tools, I've got a bunch of different options. The one that I'm looking for is called the color sampler tool. I'm going to select it. Once I have my color sampler tool selected, I'm going to come down here to where these blacks are and I'm going to just click one time with my mouse and what that's going to do is it's going to drop a control point here inside of my blacks. Now what I need to do is go back to my threshold layer and I can do that up here if I double click in the inside of this yin and yang sign on my layer that will bring up my threshold dialog box again. Now what I'm going to do is take this slider and move it all the way to the right hand side. That will make my image go the opposite. Now it's completely black. Before it was white, now it's black. And I'm going to move this slider back the opposite direction until I begin to see some white points pop up. As you can see, I've got white points popping up everywhere. So I'm going to take my color sampler tool that I still have and click inside the whites. Now I've dropped a control point here for my whites. So you'll notice the control points are numbered. I've got control point 1, which is measuring my blacks, and I've got control point 2 here measuring my whites. At this point, step one is completed, and I do not need this threshold layer anymore, so I'm going to delete it. On a Mac, that's pretty easy. All I've got to do is hit the delete key, and it will disappear. If you're on a PC or a Mac, you could take the layer and just drag it down to the trash can, and that will do the same. Nonetheless, I don't need the layer, so I'm going to delete it. You'll notice, just pointing it out, that my threshold color sampler dots are still here. I've got one, I've got two. 
So what I need to do now is the step two of this process. I'm going to go back to my little yin and yang sign down here where all of my adjustment layers live. And I'm going to grab curves adjustment layer this time. When I do, you'll notice on the left hand side of this adjustment, there are some eyedroppers within the curves adjustment. What I'm going to do is grab the black one. You'll notice if you just look at them, this is for our blacks, this is for our midtones, and this bottom one here is for our whites. I'm going to grab the black one, select inside of our black color sampler eyedropper tool that we got when we use the threshold layer. As soon as I click in there, an adjustment is made. I'm going to go back to the white eyedropper tool and I'm going to click inside the white control point, number two. And immediately, I have now set my black and white points. You'll notice if I look at this curves adjustment that it's made some corrections for me. You'll notice this gray line here that goes from one corner to the next corner is our starting point. And then we have these green blue and red lines with it. I could actually see these as individuals by clicking up here. I could look at just the adjustment that the red channel made or green channel or blue channel. All of these adjustments were made automatically. Trying to do something this advanced manually takes some practice and some time. So I found that using this threshold option to be the easiest way to set my black and white points and it works quite effectively. In fact, if I were to turn this layer on and off, you could see the before and after here. Here's our before and our after. That color correction has made my blacks, whites, the colors in the image much more vibrant. There's more contrast. It almost looks sharper to me. I like that. Now if I feel like the adjustment was too strong, I can always come up here to the opacity of that layer, the curves adjustment layer, and bring the opacity down so that it's not so strong. Still quite effective, but maybe it's not as bright as it was before. Now I've mentioned to you that this trick is going to vary depending on what type of image you're working on. I want to give you a second example, a different image, just so you could compare the two. So I have another image here of some clouds, some beautiful clouds, and I want to do this one more time for you. So again, we're going to go down here to our threshold layer. That's going to bring up our black and whites. We're going to move it to the left and then slowly back to the right and with my color sampler tool over here selected I'm going to choose my blacks I'm gonna double click on the yin and yang sign here on my layer the threshold layer that will bring back my properties box and I will move this slider now all the way to the right hand side and then slowly but surely back to the left and that will bring up my whites so with my color sampler tool I will click inside the whites now I don't need this threshold layer anymore I'm gonna delete it it's gone my control points one and two have remained I'm gonna to go to step two now go back to my adjustment layer grab curves grab the black eyedropper tool and go and click in the black control point which happens to be number one go back into my curves grab the white eyedropper tool select the white control point in my image which happens to be number two and I will minimize this by clicking the little arrow my property box will go away so I have now set my black and white points for this cloud image and if I were to turn this curves layer on and off 
Here's my before. Here's my after. Before, after, before, after. You could see makes quite a difference. The whites are whiter, the blacks are blacker. Contrast is stronger, the color looks crisper. I love what this effect does. It's really easy. It's a great thing to do when you're first starting out. And again, if I feel like my curves was too strong, all I've got to do is lower my opacity a little bit just to blend the adjustment so that it's not so strong. Two totally different images, two different results, both fantastic. You try it. Tell me if you like it. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you like these videos, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We put out new videos every Wednesday. Thank you so much for watching. Stay positive. Stay creative.